All right, guys, this morning we are heading to PRI. So we are off from our hotel to downtown Indianapolis for the performance racing industry trade show. Now the PRI show is the largest motorsports gathering in all of the world. Over 40,000 people come every December to the show at the Indiana Convention Center in the Lucas Oil Stadium to check out over 3,000 booths, companies, brands, and people in all various of motorsports to showcase their products, their services, and all the new technology that's gonna be coming out for the next Next season and this was our first PRI show and we quickly learned our first mistake and that was to not drive downtown and find a place to park we would have been much better off to shuttle or uber just because the parking garages most of them were full and there's just so many people and everyone's trying to go to the same place so it probably caused an extra 15 or 20 minutes of chaos while we were just trying to get to the building this right here this is where we were headed Made it inside the building. There it is. Got our pass. All right, guys. So I think we officially made it into the PRI show. Um, never been here before. We're a little green. Everything is uh, crazy. We pre-registered. It was super easy. We scanned in, got our lanyards, and now we're going to start walking around and checking everything out. Uh, first, I'm going to be heading to a specific booth, and then we're going to start checking out, you know, some of our other partners and people here uh, that we want to see, and then also exploring and, um, you know, checking out new companies, brands, and, you know, what people are doing in the dirt racing world. So making our first stop of the day here at the Race Seaver booth, there's some new technology that these guys are coming out with that I really wanted to share with you. Hey Tanner. This is Joe. This is going to be the next great thing for racers, I'll tell you. So Tanner does such a good job in the videos and stuff he does and I'm glad he stopped by. So new Race, race Seaver Light Seaver Impact. So we've made the Light Seaver this last year so we could do in-car flagging, but we thought we could take it a step further to make safety number one. So the Lightsaver Impact is designed so that it will give you severe crash detection. So when you're in a major accident, if it's over, say, 10G Impact, it's going to come up and give you a red cross on the screen flashing. So when safety guys get to your car, they're going to know that there's been something severe. They need to get you out and evaluate you. So what we've done here, we set up a little booth so that we could have a pitching booth and throw a Lightsaver against the backdrop and see how many Gs I can accomplish here. Probably not many, but let's try it. See? That was pitiful. I didn't even get three G, so it didn't. It didn't. Let me get behind this thing. Another one. We got to. We got to really wind it up here. See if I can wind it. He's gonna really wind it up. All right, here we go. Still didn't work. I'm terrible. You want me to throw it? Yes. Here, you hold it. Give me video. Yeah. Clear. There we go. You got it. How many Gs did he get? Four point zero. 4.0. Would you like to have your head go against that? Against I would not. Okay. Absolutely not. Well, this is really cool what you guys are doing and um, you know changing the game for, for dirt racers and everyone in the motorsports industry. Well, thank you. Well, and you know, with the flags, that's the thing with dirt. We were just talking with some other guys. It's like it's it's impossible to see if you're in the back of the pack. So yeah. now with the in-car flagging, it's right there. You can't miss it. So. That's awesome. All right. Thank Man, you. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So uh, making our second stop of the day that I wanted to share with you, we are at the Lifeline booth at PRI. Here's a look at the system that I shared with you a couple months ago on the YouTube channel. Earlier in 2023 it was, they mandated fire suppression systems throughout sprint car racing, and we chose to go the Lifeline route as they have the best system on the market. It mounts right underneath the seat, and it automatically goes off at a, at a certain temperature, and then also has a pull lever, so if you're in the situation where it doesn't go off and you need it to activate you know you have that access um, you know wherever you decide to mount it in the cockpit and of course safety is always a number one priority so um, you know proud that we use lifeline systems in our cars and it's cool as they've kind of evolved their product to also fit sprint car racing and to help us drivers so after making a couple of stops to start the day I really wanted to now just walk around and explore you know, see a bunch of different booths, see a lot of different displays, a lot of different products, 
and then also a lot of really beautiful race cars because of course that's what this show is all about and you don't always get the chance to see all this stuff this up close. So it is just about 1 p.m. now, and my mom and I were just uh, just sitting down probably for the first time today. PRI has been a huge eye-opener. It's been crazy to see all the people walk around, you know, going into the big into this big building. It's truly wild, um, you know, being our first time, so we've been tanking it all in. Saw a couple booths there early, then got to talking to some people, and it's easy once you start talking here to not stop. So quickly, we're already halfway through the day. One of the things we've been trying to keep an eye on, and we haven't figured it all out yet, but there's some speakers and some people's maybe we'd want to listen to um, that, that happen, you know, along with the trade show part of it. So we have uh, been keeping an eye on that and just trying to see as many booths as possible, and you know, maybe people that we talk to, you know, through the phone or through email, and actually make that connection face to face in person. I I could definitely see though as a race fan uh, why you would even just want to come to this just to see all the cool stuff I mean there's a uh, there's really really a lot um, for three days to take in and so that's what we're doing but just sat down for the first time we're already halfway through the day but already enjoying PRI a lot of stuff here at the trade show like this I have how cool is this thing how would you like to have that thing as your daily driver? All sorts of cool cars from drag racing to antiques to hot rods. I'm not even really big into that stuff, but seeing it all this far up close, definitely it's more intriguing. So at an event like this, it's your job if you have a booth to try to catch someone's eye. And this late model hanging from the ceiling really caught my eye, so I wanted to include it in the video. Nonetheless, we're cruising through the day, walking around. I love Silver Crown cars, so I wanted to get a shot of that, but just heading to our next stop now. So I made another stop here uh, at PRI at the Rod End Supply booth. And what do we have here? Oh, it's something that uh, we've tested this summer. Now we're gonna have it out. We won't have any to sell until early January, but this is, of course, our aluminum rod in with the red nylon fiber in it. The biggest difference is it also has a 7075 T6 aluminum ball. So uh, basically it's 30% lighter than the other aluminum rod ends. That's awesome. I've also put some aluminum balls in the chromoly steel rod ends and they've worked extremely well as also. They're only 13% lighter. That's cool. Yeah. That's so, cool. So, this is Bob Douglas with Rod and Supply. Me and Bob have became friends as, uh, you yes. know, after I made a couple of trips to the Midwest. So really cool what you're doing to kind of change the game and keep uh, making products better. Oh, we're trying. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, you buddy. So we just walked down into Lucas Oil Stadium and this part of the event. Half of it is hosted in the Indiana Convention Center, I believe is what it's called. Well, here's a little bit bigger and I think that this is where the uh, Indianapolis Colts play. I just kind of put that together, but they got some big rigs. I think there's some trailers, some more show cars. We're gonna check this out now. And just walking in, hard to beat one of Richard Petty's 43 cars. They play right here where we're walking. I know. What have you thought of the show so far? I want a new trailer. <laughs> I want a new RV. <laughs> Look at how nice this is. We've actually never really been to an NFL stadium, so we've been to uh, been to some college football games, but never an NFL stadium. We're probably I probably sound like a fanboy, but it's actually it's actually really neat. You realize how small a football field is when you put this many seats around it and if you imagine if they played like the Super Bowl here what it would look like so checking out the stadium part of all this it definitely goes much quicker because there's not as much to see in multiple halls and rooms but I will say it's a it's a good time looking through motorhomes and trailers and how you can customize them and which route you can go that was probably some of the most fun we had uh, all day so we're about to leave this area head back 
It's almost 3.30 now, so I think we have an hour and a half left of the show. It's 9 to 5 uh, on Thursday and 9 to 5 tomorrow. And then it's a little bit shorter on Saturday, but it's crazy. You get to talking, you get to standing around, you get to checking things out, and all of a sudden the day's almost already gone. So one of the cool parts about PRI is seeing new technology and guys that are trying to change the game. And today, I have a product here and I have AJ. Do you want to talk about your uh, your company and your product? Yeah, uh, we're Mayor Safety, brand new uh, neck restraint. Just launched at PRI last year and just started shipping and selling braces March of this year. Uh, we were we incorporated a small shock absorber into our neck brace, just trying to slow down the head in a crash. Um, we felt the current braces were doing an awesome job at preventing neck injury, but we wanted to improve on concussion reduction. And so uh, we, we knew shocks, and my dad had a background in suspension development, and when you're in a hammer, you think everything's a nail. So we, uh, we incorporated a shock into a brace and immediately had really positive results That's testing. Awesome. And so uh, it's been a, it's been a great first year and we're hoping for a better second year that's crazy as you can see um, on this head and neck restraint that is the the shock is in here correct yep and basically you guys you guys did a bunch of testing and prototypes and, and made it and now got to the final product that is today yeah you know it's been uh, it's actually been seven years in development um, but we've been just working on it working on it started with a bunch of 3d printed braces me running them in a midget on a random weekend when nobody even knew about it and uh, then we got through SFI certification last year, so it's ready for the public. And uh, we had a bunch of guys in it, like Jake Andriotti and um, uh, Travis Pastrana, a bunch of different types of cars this That's year. Cool. It's been, been cool. Very, very neat. Well, our first day of PRI is officially done for the show part from nine to five. But now they have, I think it's called the after party and a little happy hour from five to seven with food, um, some alcohol, some other beverages. And that's going on over there here on the concourse inside uh, the stadium where the Indianapolis Colts play. So earlier we were down that way. Now we're up here. This is a really, really good way to end the day. Meet some more people, enjoy the event. I think even while they're doing the food and doing all that, you can sit here in these seats and they have a little race going on uh, down with the track that they built. Mom and I have officially exited the Indiana Convention Center. Now it's time to get back to our car. We're gonna find out how much we had to pay for parking. Everyone is officially leaving PRI day number one. Just wanted to finish the video off with a couple key takeaways from our first day ever at PRI and never going to the event before. And to start that off, beginning of the video I told you parking. Parking was a nightmare to start the day. So if possible, I would first recommend that maybe you just shuttle or Uber or Lyft, whatever. Find a way to get to downtown Indy. Probably would have saved us a little bit of trouble to kind of start the trip. After that, definitely recommend that you get pre-registered and do all that ahead of time. Noticed that some people were waiting in line waiting in line when we got there and I'm assuming that's just because they were trying to get all the correct stuff to get into the show. You want to avoid that so you can jump right into it and get your trip started off on a good note. Also along with planning, I would recommend that you, you know, use PRI's website and their mobile app. They do a really good job at, you know, giving you some tools so you can basically plan out the whole thing to be efficient with time, know what you want to see find things that are really intriguing, you know, with the seminars and all that. With our chaos in life, I feel like we didn't even get a chance to really take advantage of that side of things. So our first day was a lot more exploring where now we kind of came back to the hotel and then mapped stuff out a little bit better after. And if you have all three days, I mean, you do have enough time, I feel like, to see most. But still, if you really just like want to find all the cool stuff about the event, you're better off to kind of do that ahead of time because I think once you get there, you almost your eyes get so big and you realize how much there is to see and once you get starting talking with people, like it, it's easy for time to move and for you to lose it. And then maybe a month or two in advance ahead of time, make reservations downtown if you're wanting to eat at one of the fancier places or somewhere that's actually close to the convention center. Because we didn't know this, but all that stuff gets booked way ahead of time. So we weren't able to get in at any of the restaurants that a lot of people recommended to us just because that stuff was all gone way in advance and we were ready to eat right after because we didn't eat the whole entire day. So we ended up going to that after party, which is another option. But just depending on which way you wanna go, definitely keep that in mind. 
Anyway, that's all we got. We're excited to enjoy the rest of the weekend. And no matter what part of motorsports you're in, I definitely think the PRI show would be a great event to attend, whether you're a driver, whether you're a crew guy, um, whether you're a race fan. There's just a little bit of everything to see, and I think no matter what you do, if you're a diehard, if you love the sport, uh, there's something that you will, you know, that will come out of it and you will enjoy. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for the rest of the content that we have while we're here in Indianapolis.